Well, here we are, the final Cider House Rebellion folk show for this miserable year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we made it back to Earth. Look, here we are. Yes. Isn't this exciting? And it's lovely to be here mm. in this damp, dank atmosphere. Um, mm. But we found tinsel, which there was a shortage we of have. space, so yes. that's good. Yes, definitely. It, um, we managed to hitch an early lift. Um, basically, Santa does some uh, flight tests before the night, apparently. Nobody knew this before. No. Uh, but we managed to catch a lift with him, and uh, he brought us home. So we, uh, we're going to be home for Christmas, which is most lovely. We are, which is excellent. Mm. And, um, yes. So, we, I think we'll start with a lovely Christmas carol. Yeah, let's have that well-known ancient German Christmas carol that is normally sung in German and Latin, so please join in. And it's called In Dulce Jubilo.
through this series we've had the opportunity to interview some eminent musicians, intelligent people and uh, had some very interesting answers to our questions. But we're going to um, have a contrast to that now and I'm going to talk to Murray and ask him a few things. So, <laughs> Mr Granger. Mr Summerhouse. Yes, well, something that fascinates me is um, what do you think is the point of music? Ooh. Well, I could be flippant and say earning me a living. But that would um, be a lie. But that would be a lie because I'm not earning a living. Yes, no. that is so a fair point. So what is the point of music? Um, I suppose the serious answer would be a means of expressing emotion that words do not allow us to do. OK. Is that an answer for you? Is a means of you expressing your emotion? Or do you mean it's a way that emotions can be expressed and that we can receive as listeners? I or think that's a mu it? I know I think that's a multifaceted answer really in that That was a question not an answer. <laughs> this is going well, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I would say that as a listener it is a means to have emotions transmitted to you so that it's a it's an art form that stimulates your emotional responses. Mm -hmm. As a musician it's both. Um, certainly playing with good musicians, when I get the chance, that is. Has that ever happened? Um, it has, just not this year. Um, <laughs> when playing with musicians, that can give me the emotional response. It, it, it's a way of having a more, a more intense conversation with somebody than I have ever managed with words. Yes. But equally, it allows me to say things almost that I didn't know I wanted to say sometimes. It, it, music is quite a quite an unlocking thing often. so for you it's a it's a it can be an unlocking something that gives you the chance to express yourself maybe even express yourself to yourself because you didn't know you yep. needed to say Potentially. it so, um so kind of like a self therapy you didn't know you had a problem yep i mean <laughs> oh no i know i've got a problem <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i would say it's it's all of those things. That's why music is quite so fascinating in that it can it can vary so much. Depends what you're playing. If I'm playing a really intense piece with you, that can be really emotional, really um, you know, touching the soul. And then later that evening I might be playing for a dance, at which point that is triggering another emotion. You're into your your fun and your your bit of energy and, and it can really get the blood pulsing and all those. So music can really tick so many different boxes. So if you just imagine you as a listener, um, mm. so taking away the fact that you might play something, might play something mm. can you imagine life without music? Not at all. Can you imagine life without colour? Can you imagine life without... So it's, that, it's, it's, it's that much it's, of it's, an it intrinsic is, thing. Uh, uh, utterly, utterly. I, it's impossible to... I, I, I don't know if anybody has ever had a day with zero music in it. It might not be that they listen to a piece, but there is music. There is always music. Even the birds now, I can hear birds singing. That is music. There is. There is. They might not think so. They might. They think might they're talking think they're to talking. each other and saying, yes, "Fuck off, get out of my territory." Yes, but then singers quite often say that to me. So um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's that's a truth of singers. And I'm, I'm mildly unconvinced by the idea, but it's worth exploring mm. that the nobody has ever had a day without music. I guess it depends what you count as music. Mm. If we're going a back little to little tune in the back of your head. Uh, well, I'm going back to kind of prehistoric, um, just after being some kind of dinosaur. Well, you are older than me. So. That's true. Mm. Um, so. <laughs> Does it count as music when you're just making some kind of inane vocalisation or hitting somebody on the head with a rock, rhythmically? Yeah, I mean, have you not watched Top of the Pops? Oh, it's not on anymore, but... <laughs> no, <I haven't. laughs> uh, yes, um, define music then. Yes, it's like defining yeah. art, isn't it? Is a, is a brick a piece of art? I suppose it depends... It depends on what it's doing for you. If you are a caveman walking around, you're a bit tired and you vaguely hum some random noises to yourself... Maybe it's music. Is that music? Ooh. And his early language was language, first of all, some kind of musical mm. grunty thing. This is getting very deep. Getting very deep. Move on. Mm. So, if music is so important, yes, how do you explain the fact that you play the accordion? Ah, well, I also have a a huge, um, well, sort of a violent streak to my personality, <laughs> really. And um, <laughs> I, I've always thought that. Uh, 
bringing pain to the world was the way forward. Excellent. Mm. And you chose me specifically? Absolutely. To work with a guy, on that basis? I thought you deserved it. It's starting to make a lot more sense. Mm. Excellent. Um, so this is still on the, on the music, what's the point bit. Mm. Are you trying to get us out of a job here? Have we got, have, have we got, have we a, got job? a job? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm, now this, I'm bringing that specifically back to you. So you, you'll find it does this stuff for expression and all mm -hmm. that thing. Is it worth sleepless nights, getting home at five in the morning, being home for two hours, driving for eight hours, getting home at seven in the morning, recording all night twice, getting stuck in the studio? It must mean a lot for it still to be worth yes doing like all jobs passions hobbies activities there are good days and bad days absolutely <laughs> um there are times where i've been sitting editing or mixing something that is really challenging i'm not going to say what <laughs> although you know um, <laughs> That, to do with those moments, place. I'm not saying anything, I'm not going to go there. Um, those moments, yeah, they're really trying, you can get utterly exhausted, but then you get that moment when you listen back to something, you play a gig that is just, just something indefinable. I, I, I can think of a few gigs over the years where it's such a euphoric sense when you come off that stage, it just... That that makes up for so many sleepless nights and all the rest of it. Yeah. Plus, I've got a nine-month-old, so I'm going to get the sleepless nights anyway. So you might as well, so put... I might as well do music. <laughs> hey. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good. Well, I think that's um, been yeah. very revealing, and mm. I don't have any more questions for you at the moment. Thank goodness. So there we are. And I think that takes us to our next piece of music, mm. which is uh, a medieval carol, uh, the Agincourt carol, which uh, I think was, it's easy to think that carols are just for Christmas, but it just meant a piece of music in a certain verse order and mm. where the choruses came. Mm. And this tearful little number is celebrating, um, well, essentially the death of a lot of people that the English killed in yeah. France. Um, mm. Mm. So Let's listen to it, I think. Yes, happy Christmas.
Well, that was a cheery little number, wasn't it? Hope you enjoyed that. Um, so as many of you know, we've just actually come back from space. Uh, we've been up there for, I think, was it six, seven weeks, something of that order? Yeah, yeah. Well. Um, And we did do all our shows from space. And well, the filming of the, the bits, film, the, the film, yes, of course. Yes. We recorded the music before that, as we have seen from the woodlands and things. Yes, there aren't that you many woodlands. You don't get them in space. No. Well, we couldn't find them. No, I they suppose we were also, there. our spacecraft was essentially broken. Yes. So we couldn't exactly explore. Yeah. Indeed. Um, now, filming introductions and chat yeah. in space, you might think would be easy. I mean, we're in space. What could possibly interrupt us or go wrong? How wrong would you be? Hello again. Uh, hang, welcome. On, hang on, hang on, hang um, on. I wasn't... Right. Happy? Happy. <laughs> Hello again. Um... Let's restart that. <laughs> Are you happy? <laughs> uh, well, our special guest this week. I wasn't going to say that. Doesn't matter. You can no. say it. Our special guest this week is Paul Sartin. <laughs> um, yes. Then, have we already done Paul Sartin? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was flawless. <laughs> and he was kind enough to say that he would talk to us and we talked <laughs> he was cut <cunning> enough <laughs> and he was cut <laughs> enough I didn't understand that bit it's meant to be good I think you were going hang on, hang on, we're going to record good or kind <laughs> we're going to record on <laughs> going to record the world word good are we okay go on then he was good enough. Good. Try kind as well. Good. He was kind enough. Kind. Come. <laughs> That's a much of a question. <laughs> I think it'd be kind enough, not good enough. He was kind enough. Steve was kind enough. Kind. <laughs> Come. <laughs> Was that okay, do we think? Don't forget, next week, to join us for the next episode, um, it is, we, our special guest is Lady Nate. I think you could do that again. Ah, you're going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hello, and welcome to episode three, The Insider Scoop. Here we are, the Cider House Rebellion folk show. It's now... I thought it was the episode three of The Insider... <laughs> smooth. Very smooth. Oh no, it wasn't a triumph. <laughs> so it'd be lovely if at this point we could give you a list of the gigs we're about. There's that bloody space goblin again. And it. Stop! Stop. No, it was good. I'm not going to start again, oh. I'm going to carry on. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> You're starting. <laughs> Rolling. Eventually. Hello, and welcome back. Or no, look at that. Thank you very much. No, that was rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from. So, um, as well, no. Yeah, I'm getting there, I'll get there. I'm just trying to work out how to start this. Yeah. Oh, that was great. <laughs> so you'll all remember the now infamous uh, series of adverts suggesting that those trying to work in the arts should retrain. Um, I thought you looked good as a ballet dancer, actually. Yes, thank mm. you. Um, actually, I used to do ballet, as it was called. Are you going to go and do ballet? Um, when I was very young. I don't think I was very good. Anyway. I will be having words with his mother to get some photographic evidence. That's a worrying thought. Watch this space. Pauline, you know what you need to do. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> However, we thought that retraining wasn't such a terrible idea in some ways, and um, Murray suggested that I retrain by detuning my violin randomly and retraining to be able to play it on notes that I didn't know what they were and didn't understand. 
However, we did work out afterwards that that wasn't retraining because that's what he does anyway. Yes. Mm. Um, and also it wasn't really retraining because I just detuned my strings and he made me start without training in between at all. So mm. the whole, whole idea was um, essentially rubbish. Are you saying that the idea that musicians should retrain was a stupid idea? I don't know. Mm. I've got confused. Anyway, mm. here's a retrained, detuned and retuned into C major instead of whatever a violin's normally in, which I don't know, no nope. track.
So, um, as Adam said earlier, we have been having some amazing guests on our folk show. And I would like at this moment just to say thank you to our six guests. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, thank you very much for suffering an hour talking with us. It must have been agony. Um, but we have one more interviewee to meet. Yes. And I'd like to say that I'm very pleased to welcome to the show, I'd like to, Mr... Adam Summerhays, welcome. Well, you can't really welcome me. That's why you'd like to say it, but you can't, because I'm already here. Uh-huh. So, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Hello. Hello. It's very Pleasure nice to be, be here. here. Oh, is it? Yes. It's if I'd have been one of the special guests, I'd have been over the moon to be interviewed. Well, we were over the moon. Oh, point. Only last week. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So, you, as we all know, play a scrapey four-stringed thing. Yes. Why? Why did you start it? Um, well, because there was a very small one on my pelmet in my bedroom that I couldn't reach. Okay. When I was very young. That. So I then somehow or other reached it and played it. And that seemed very satisfying. Um, so that was enough for me, really. Career choice made. Career choice made. (laughs) That was it. Yes. Yes. It must have been a, um... I, I always think for, for violinists or fiddlers, it, it must be a difficult first bit, because, let's be honest, the violin, when it isn't played well, and I'll leave the obvious jokes out, yes. um, it's not the nicest sound in the world. No. Let's put it that way. No, what's brilliant about the violin is, even when you're supposedly very good at it, it only takes one misstep, <laughs> and it's vile. <laughs> and hence violin, presumably. Yes. Presumably, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Um, well... Yes, it's interesting, isn't it? I mean, my grandpa was a violinist and fiddler, and he was deeply implicated in the whole starting the violin thing at many levels that I probably don't truly mm, understand. Mm, true. But certainly he was, a, he was an amazing guy and a great role model in many ways as I was growing up, um, although I'm sure my family would say not in all ways. Uh, I think your family would probably say you haven't grown up. But... Oh, harsh. Oh. <laughs> but they're not here, so we don't True. need to go into that. No messages in the chat, <laughs> please, at this point. Thank you very much. Um, so I think that gives you a, an impetus to get over the initial horror if you're trying to get somewhere yes. because you're kind yeah, of... Yeah, if you can hear where, where you're heading. But also it's possible, I think, to imagine that perhaps a prerequisite for being a violinist is to have fairly poor hearing and no musical appreciation so that you get over the first you bit heard it here first, folks. Yes, I suppose it is true to say that a child doesn't listen with the same ears that an adult does so uh, no. I mean, quite often no because I mean, they I would look silly on the side of its they head they would look very out of form yes, yes but yes. I mean I can think of, of my children they banging drums and making strange squeaking noises on record oh no sorry that's peers um <laughs> no my children make strange noises on various instruments that would be and um, they, peers adams he's talking yes. about the world's number one recorder player strange squeaking mm. noises indeed yes um but they certainly make noises that that you as parents grin and bear and say oh isn't that lovely and sweet but yes. actually is horrible really, and yes, <laughs> a grin is basically a grimace in disguise yes absolutely yes, so but, maybe yeah. you when you were learning didn't actually know maybe what it sounded like although the thing that i remember and it's still the thing that i love about the violin you don't, melodies and tunes and all that bollocks who cares just when you get a good note and the whole thing resonates under your ear and it's such a something about just that sound that is entirely intoxicating actually mm. i mean the violin i own now i chose um i played one note an e on the g string and it just had such an incredible sound compared to anything i'd played before i decided at that moment it was what the violin i wanted mm. and i think there was an element of that from when i was very young even this tiny horrible little thing it might not have been such a horrible one, actually. No, possibly not. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. Starting on the cheapest, most horrible Chinese piece of no, boxwood. Which this definitely wasn't. It's not going to help you. It's definitely a truth of any musical instrument. If it gives something back to you, you benefit. Yeah. If, if it's doing the opposite, it's, you, a, it's a negative thing. Stop. So <laughs> as an accordionist, or, or I'll go further and say just a keyboard player, someone who is used to dealing with multiple notes at once for me i quite often will get that feedback when i find a particularly lush rich chord or, or harmonic progression something that it's got oh that's just 
I know you can double stop, but basically you're a single line melody instrument. Yeah, it's that. How does that work for you as a musician? Because you have, most of the time, are going to be reliant on other musicians to fill out that space. I know there's solo like violin that. pieces, it but... Doesn't, yeah, th- that's the thing. What I'm in love with on the violin is in the same way as if you hear some old woman up in the Hebrides just crooning a lament by the fire. It's totally complete in itself. Mm-hmm. The violin has all that human voice quality and is incredibly expressive within it, except when you make <laughs> when it goes wrong, noises. Yeah. Hey, that's um, true of any instrument. <laughs> <laughs> but when it's right, you can totally create a world within the violin and within your mind that doesn't need anything or anybody. What's wonderful about playing with you, actually, oh. I have to say, shouldn't really say it in public, I agree, <laughs> um, is that when I'm making those worlds, they're amplified and expanded and something new is created and that's wonderful. Mm. It's, it's a thing that it, I spent many years playing classical music all around the world um, and it's not the same. At that point, you are a single line as part of a whole, mm-hmm. and you're, it's great, and there's wonderful things about it, but actually it isn't the thing I fell in love with. The thing I fell in love with is just that ability to create a world just with a violin. Okay. So that's one of the things that's been so interesting about this year, as, as it's, as it's most of the performance I've done has yeah. been with Murray doing this stuff. In a way, it's a full circle for me from where I started to actually mm. bringing that out into something that is truly satisfying for me. I don't care so, what you lot think of it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, if you had to choose, uh, I know my answer to this one, if you had to choose, and that's a silly question really, but if you could only ever play solo, or only ever play chamber... What do you mean by chamber, though? With someone else, with other people. Because you've said the violin is a complete sound, it yeah. fills all the space, it does everything. So the violin does everything. So you can do that, or you can work with somebody else if you had to choose, which you don't have to, but if you did. I think it's still a slightly dependent question. If it was chamber in the sense of classical chamber music, in, in a in a, yeah, in a, in a pre-written, a this is, this is yeah. classical music kind of way, I would not choose that. If it's, if it's what I'm doing with you, or maybe what I do with Cormac, mm-hmm. uh, Cormac Byrne, um, or even if the Ha would count, where it's the four of us yeah, together, no, and that's still that. yeah, no, that's still I would probably fine. choose that above. Because above, so. How, yeah, because right. although that the, the thing that I fell in love with is is what you can do there, being able to take that somewhere else is one step further. So yeah, I would choose I would choose not to be on my own in space just with a violin. Very good. Right. Well, I think we should have to be another piece. Thoroughly interviewed. Yeah. And what would the next what is piece the next piece? Be? I to wonder. do with flowers, I seem to remember. Oh, yes, it's, it's, it's called, it's a very ancient carol called There Is No Rose. Uh, so it's not really about flowers at all, because there weren't any. Ah.
So we've had a wonderful first series of our Cider House Folk Show. Yes, it's been, been an very enjoyable joy. for us, and yeah. we haven't had any complaints from our guests that we've been given anyway. No, no, not that we know of. No. Uh, we had some fabulous guests, as you've all seen, and we're pleased to say we have another series coming in the spring. Mm. With it's some equally fabulous guests. Equally fabulous guests who, yeah, we look forward to announcing, but we're not going to tell you who they are yet. Nope. You're going to have to wait. Yes. Mm. If you subscribe to uh, Facetube and uh, UTwit and all the rest of those, um, we'll make sure we give you notifications and plenty of warning to uh, prepare, get the popcorn ready, all those sorts of things. But this series is not completely over because no. Murray was um, uh, clearing up his studio, I was. which I believe was rather overdue. Uh, and what did you find, Murray? Well, I found on the cutting room floor some bits some questions and answers that you haven't seen as yet, and I thought it would be really good to share these with you. Yes. So, Steve, um, I, I was sorry to hear that um, you were rather disgusted and disappointed when you heard our CD. <sighs> I didn't know what to say. I was just like, I was so lost in it, uh, I didn't get a chance to press the reset button, so it was like... You know, it is very different. Hmm. So, what would be your reaction if we asked you to maybe play with us? Bugger off. How about just me, maybe? Uh, no Adam. Even quicker, bugger off. So, Paul, I'm actually really interested to know, how is your pedal-powered uh, rubber aeroplane business going? Generally been more busy than usual. Oh, yes, I can imagine. So, yeah, it's been pretty good for me. That's interesting, but what about that trial flight that you and Paul Hutchinson attempted across the Atlantic? And the whole thing just completely crashed. We got full marks for effort, though, but... Uh... But since then, we've found other ways. <laughs> we found other ways around this, you know. Mm, yeah, unfortunate. But you did manage that flight to Barnard Castle, didn't you? Well, let's just keep it amongst ourselves. So, Andy, I believe you've just been on. Uh, was it Britain's Got Talent? Yeah, that was that was not not the super experience. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I know you went on this time as a singer. Uh, did something go wrong? Basically, I sounded like a complete donkey. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't that bad. I mean, have you listened back? No, I've just gone... <laughs> hmm, yeah, no, that doesn't sound ideal. It was kind of pointless carrying on. So I believe you've just been uh, hosting a reality TV show with Vladimir Putin. Uh, what was one of the hardest things about working with him? I think one of the hardest things, weirdly, is the food. <laughs> Oh yes, I, I have heard that his timekeeping can be rather wobbly. <laughs> you know, you just end up eating sandwiches at like 12pm because you haven't eaten since, you know, lunchtime or something. And it's just really... Hmm, but can you actually cope with, uh, with the end results? You just have to be prepared. I think because he's so... He's such a creative brain. Oh yes, even. I can imagine. He's always just thinking about how you can improve things, and so um, yeah, I just thought you know we'll just go with it, and it will be fine, and it was fine. So, Luke, I believe you were inspired to become a musician by your great grandfather, uh, and he used to sing a, a beautiful lullaby to you um, every night. Any chance you could uh, sing us a little bit of it? Do <laughs> I hate the Queen! Peter Open is us, Oh, wow, that's great. And uh, he was a uh, famous yak herder, I believe, and that you're following in his footsteps. How's that working out for you? It's, it's really out on a limb, uh, which is also what I like about it. It's very adventurous. And I believe you use the song in your yak herding. Um, how's that work? It's like being a lover. You just have to totally give yourself to it, and you don't know whether they're going to come. We'd like to apologise for the fact that every show so far has ended with Jeremy Bird bending your ear, but there's no point because you're now going to hear a Christmas song from him. Hello, it's me, Jeremy Bird, with the thing you have all been waiting for, my song. Yes! I am so fabulous that I wrote a song all myself. Yes, except the words which Jesse wrote and the music which Adam wrote. And I wrote all the other parts in the song except the bits that Murray and Adam did. Yes, all of them! Hmm. I am a fabulous bard! Yeah! 
So there we have it, uh, Jeremy's first official single um, that will of course be available um, nowhere. I think that's probably safe. <laughs> Seems uh, like a good idea. <laughs> we don't want to encourage him after no, all. No, no, no. no, no. no. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful to share this show with you. Um, we wish you an unbelievably Merry Christmas. Or just a Christmas. Yes. Whichever you or prefer. just a Merry. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> uh, in the new year, in January, we have an exclusive new single coming out. Um, watch this space. I can't remember the date. Twenty something, I think. I seem 17. to remember the twenty seventh, but that might yeah. have been my anyway. anniversary or something. I don't know. <laughs> Quite possible. <laughs> um, watch this space, and we'll tell you all about it. But in the meantime, have a wonderful festive season, a great new year, and we will see you next year.
No, do or was that too bollocksy? I think it was bollocks, but we could. Do we keep bollocks or do we do another one? We do another one and see if the bollocks was all right. Okay. You didn't say anything. No. no. That might not be ideal. Let's. Um, let, you can say something this time. Okay. okay. So there we have Jeremy's very first single. Hmm. Yes. A career ahead of him, I'm sure you'll all agree. Um, okay, yes. moving swiftly yes. on. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching our folk show, this series. It's yeah. been an absolute joy to see all your comments and have you with us as we've uh, put these shows out. It's been wonderful. Yeah, and um, I hope you all have a, a good Christmas, um, as good as can be Absolutely. And this year. Yeah. And we'll see you in the new year. We, we, have. we have a new single coming out in January, so watch this space for that. We'll let you know. Um, but in the meantime, great festive season and we will see you next year.